there's no one size fit all in, in our industry. But for me, what has worked is relationships. It's that solely as what has worked for me. From Reminder Media, this is Stay Paid, a sales and marketing podcast on a mission to help you close more deals and retain more business. Hosted by the VP of Marketing, Josh Stake, and Reminder Media's president, Luke Akery. So get ready to hear the golden nuggets that will allow you to live a life of freedom tomorrow, but only if you take action today. Luke, I think you stole my sweatshirt, man. I did, man. I lost, I, I really I lost like my stay paid, paid sweatshirt, and I like now you're wearing one. Sweatshirt. It's yeah. like really nice, really comfy. I was telling people I, I realized why we didn't uh, get a lot of closes on that webinar we did the other day. Because <laughs> you were what? Because I spoke the whole webinar. This is about like your marketing. You got to target the right people. Oh, I thought so, it had to do with the sweatshirt. Oh, it might have been the sweatshirt. <laughs> I was actually wearing this sweatshirt yesterday too. It's you know a jacket, so you can wear it multiple days in a row. But I'm now calling to. So one of the tips we do for our webinar is like when we do a webinar here at Reminder Media, we then follow up yep. with everybody that attended the webinar. And most people who do webinars don't do that. Yeah. But we do that, and it helps us not only obviously add more clients, but it's an amazing way to start nurturing these people because they get a face or a voice, I should say, to the face yeah. and all that stuff. But um, all the leads got launched. And the amount of different industries, <laughs> my whole wow. presentation was about real, real estate, estate. Real estate, real estate. <laughs> and it was like we had a pastor on the on the webinar. Yeah, we had a wow. metal and glass <laughs> business on the webinar. We had, which Insurance is amazing. Agents, it we excites had financial me advisors, yeah. for Reminder Media going, man, there's so much opportunity. There's so many business out there that need help, that need help with their relationship marketing and all this good stuff. Yeah. But my whole presentation was towards real estate agents. And it just shows you, hey, when you're going to do your marketing, you're going to do your ad spin and all that stuff, you, you got to target. <laughs> you got to target appropriately. Well, look, it, it is a lesson because we did target, but we've just yep. like Google I don't know what it was. YouTube do you think it was and, YouTube? We nah, did a it's, it's ad list. on YouTube. It was our list. So we, yeah, we run a lot of, and this is just, um, we're, we're pretty transparent about this stuff because we want you guys to take some advice from it. But we run a lot of what we would call top of funnel resources or leads. So these are printables. We do a lot of printables. And we try that and target the within gotcha. the real estate industry or industries that we work in. But um, ultimately, Facebook's going to go outside of that and try and find people that are likely to convert on your ad, even if they don't match every single specific criteria that you give them. So now we have an email list of a lot of different industries that have downloaded these things, and they it's, were then signing dude, up Dude, it's the exciting. Uh, like, there's millions of small businesses out there. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know about you guys with, like, your excitement in your industry, but for me and in our company, I'm just like, oh, this is so exciting. All right. Well, we're, we have a little bit of a different uh, industry here. This is in the real estate world, but our guest today is in the commercial real estate side. Yeah, so we Moses, don't get to talk to a lot of commercial yeah, real estate Yeah, his agents. name is Moses uh, Hall. He started his real estate career in 2014 as a licensed realtor and specializes now in commercial investment property acquisitions and commercial real estate disposition. In January 2019, Moses launched Mohall Commercial and Urban Development, where his focus is redevelopment through commercial real estate and investment properties. Moses has been recognized by Realtor Magazine as part of their 30 Under 30 class of 2019, and he currently serves as the 2020 National Association of Realtors Vice Chair and Commercial Economic Issues and Trends Forum, mm. and also on the NAR Board of Directors. So busy guy. Moses, Jeez. welcome to Stay Paid. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, yeah Moses, really excited to have you here. Excited to talk about commercial real estate, too. I'm just excited to talk to anybody right yeah. now. Because <laughs> we've been in quarantine. This is going to come out a little bit later, but you're all going to remember this time <laughs> where we've had Absolutely. to distance. Absolutely. Social distancing. Uh, but excited because a lot of uh, times we talk to real estate residential side and it's focused there, but I'm, I'm Interested to pick your brain from the marketing side for commercial real estate. And then also just in general, as you're looking at the industry with real estate, how to best grow your business. But go ahead and just introduce yourself to our audience. Tell them your journey, how you got into real estate, what led you to where you're at today. Kind of give the 30,000 foot view. Sounds good. Sounds good. Once again, I appreciate the opportunity to be on such a platform to share my story and share some of my success tips that's helped me grow my business. So actually, I'm originally from New York. Um, and I have a background in the arts, so I play piano. So I went to a performing arts high school called LaGuardia High School. So mm. if you ever seen the movie Fame, um, that was what the movie was based off yeah. of. And um, when I turned 18, um, I didn't want to be that starving artist um, <laughs> that we all hear about. And so my focus was to 
study and learn the music industry. So from that prompted me to move from New York to Chicago. And I attended Columbia College Chicago studying music business. And uh, I got to the end of my four years. Um, like most college grads, we're like, okay, what the hell are we going to do next? I'm um, looking for a job. And obviously, there wasn't many opportunities in the music industry. As we are all aware, the music industry has greatly changed in the last 10 years or even greater uh, with technology and other marketing platforms. Uh, and so those jobs that I was looking to get after graduation, like my initial goal was to be the next Jay-Z, next Diddy. <laughs> I uh, love that. And, uh, you know, like I said, the music industry greatly changed. Uh, I was actually interning at a music publishing licensing company uh, where we uh, helped put different music and different films, TV commercial, campaign ads. So I had the opportunity to work with various uh, brands like Nike, Bacardi, the Olympics, um, all different types of stuff in terms of placing music um, in different um, campaign ads. Uh, but like I said, after I graduated, I was interning. Uh, they didn't have an opportunity for me to get hired. So my entrepreneur mode kicked in. And what I realized was that every art form needs some type of space. And so what I thought was, oh, hey, why not find this cool loft space that I can live on one side of it and then rent out the other side. So I was kind of like the Airbnb of, you know, event space. Um, and so what I started to do, I started to market to photographers, models, other uh, video people that wanted to rent my space for an hourly rate. And I would use that income to pay the rent. And um, so it, I, I, with each booking, it grew. Hmm. And I got a lot of publicity. Um, I was featured in Verizon Wireless Small Business Series. Wow. Um, I also, when we talk about Google searching, I came up on the first page of Google when you were looking for event space. So I started to get a lot of calls uh, for people to rent this cool, hip um, loft space. And what I realized for me to uh, upgrade to a larger commercial space that I was leasing that I would have to change my business model, change my pricing. And I realized, I started to do the math on what the landlord was charging me, what the landlord was getting from other units, what his potential mortgage payment was. And I said, you know what? I need to learn the commercial investment side of stuff. Um, and so that prompted me to go get my broker's license in 2014. Um, and I've been working on the commercial investment sales side since then. So I got to ask you when it comes to like commercial real estate, right? One of the hardest things that I hear for us in our business is, and, and I talk to commercial real estate agents all the time in our prospecting. And one of the things I hear is they, they don't see it necessarily as a relationship game. And what I mean by that is like I start talking to them about, hey, you got to connect with the people in your database that are the decision makers for the commercial building. Whatever it is, is the lease that's happening, the actual sale of the building, whatever it is that you're trying to do. And a lot of times I get a lot of pushback on the relationship side. They tend to think of it more as a transaction based side. I guess give me your thoughts on that. Um, you know, everyone has their methods. There's no one size fit all in, in our industry. But for me, what has worked is relationships. It's that solely has what has worked for me. Uh, me being on, as you guys read my bio, I sit on several boards, yeah. several committees, uh, not just locally, but internationally. And me being on these boards positioned me to build relationships with developers, uh, with other building owners and me having that rapport that other people can vouch for me allows me to win the business. Um, instead of me just, you know, I know some people cold call and try to get business that way. For me, like you said, it's strictly relationship based. And that's kind of worked for me as especially being a more a boutique brokerage, uh, being kind of the underdog. Like you said, I'm under 30. You know, the average commercial specialist is 55 plus and, um, <laughs> you know, me coming in as a, as a, as a young grasshopper, they say I have to kind of hold my own weight. And the way I do that is like you said, building those relationships, showing myself 
approved and I look at it more than a, a transactional. If you build that relationship uh, with that individual, they'll become a, a client for a lifetime. Mm. So what are some of the things that you do like tactically in your business to uh, foster, nurture, build those relationships with people? Is it through marketing? Is it through reaching out consistently? Well, it, well, one platform that I love is LinkedIn. Mm. Um, I, I love that business platform for me because, like you said, it's, it's different for residential agents because not to not say maybe your next home buyer is not on LinkedIn. Yeah. But because commercial is a business to business kind of industry, uh, I'm connected with other business owners. And um, I've, the one thing that I love about LinkedIn is, is that I can post the listing, I can post a closing, I can post something informational, and my network can uh, react to it and like it. And then once they do that, everybody in their network will react and like into it. And then it's kind of like a, a, a tumbling effect. And so now I have people that may have been third, fourth connections now seeing my post and I've actually have gotten people to inbox me. Hey, I saw your listing. I want more information about that. And I've been able to gain business that way. So that's a platform. Um, and then, like I told you, I'm very relationship based. So I get involved in my industry. I sit on several boards. I go to different events. Um, one uh, particular scenario is there's this developer that in Chicago that I've been wanting to work with. And it's been several years that we've started to build a rapport and relationship, but I was going to all his events. I was, anytime he was speaking, he would see me there. Then, you know, we started ending up on the same boards and same committee meetings and he saw me there. And then over a, a two or three time period, uh, we began to build a, a great rapport. Now it's developed into a business relationship. Um, now there's millions of people that are dying to work with this developer. Um, he's doing a great work on the South side of Chicago. And um, here now I am with a more direct line, more personal relationship. And that went, you know, came through going to these events, seeing yeah. him speak, building him being in his face constantly. Um, and then once he saw the work that I was doing in the industry, it was like, OK, this guy's got it. And so now we've been able to partner and do some great things um, on the development side, on the south side of Chicago. Well, you're, you're becoming omnipresent, not yep. only with your social profile, but then in person. And I can't remember who we had on the podcast that said this. I want to say it was David DeSell, but he said like the old the old adage was, it's who you know, right? But now he's like, it's not right. who you know, it's who knows you. Who knows you, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I want to circle back to LinkedIn because I think that's super powerful and we have uh, uh, listeners who can take advantage of some of that. Uh, I think I read that you have 10,000 plus connections on LinkedIn. Is that right? Uh, well, just, uh, or followers. Uh, well, in general, yeah, I have close to, uh, that, um, on my uh, LinkedIn profile and then combined with all my social media profiles, okay. it's so over, over 10,000. How did yeah. you grow that? Like what did, what steps did you take? Mm -hmm. Obviously you're posting constantly. What kind of content are you using? How are you growing your, your, uh, social? So profiles? each, each platform, depends on dictates the content that I post. Um, LinkedIn, I know it's more business oriented individuals. So my content will be more of my listings, more of uh, industry related things that are coming down the pipeline, um, things that people can use and share that may be helpful to their business. Um, so that's kind of what I use LinkedIn. Uh, Facebook, my personal Facebook page and Instagram page, um, you know, what I notice with Facebook, sometimes if you're, uh, posting your listings, you won't get as much traction. Right. Um, some people take offense. They're like, Oh, people don't support me. No, I think it's more of a, a Facebook system that limits what people, uh, you know, want to see. And so what yeah. I do with Facebook, I let people know that I'm in the industry, but that's not my full focus. I try to add a more human, more touchable, more relatable element on my Facebook, um, Instagram pages. So that when people like, um, last night, since we're all quarantined, uh, <laughs> I've been uh, a cooking storm. I've just been trying different recipes and cooking. And so I made a joke nice. about it this morning. And within two hours, I've garnished over 400 likes, close to 400 likes on that one post. Nice. Yeah, that's so what, amazing. What, so what do I know from that post? I know that people that have never really interacted with my real estate posts, they've interacted with that, 
that human side. Oh, he cooks, you know, and now they're going to go to my page. They're going to see, oh, he does real estate. Oh, he has listings. Oh, this guy seems pretty cool. And then I build a following kind of that way. And then people share it. People that, you know, people, even though they like my cooking status, but they started to share my other real estate post status and stuff like that and tips that I've used to grow my business. So it really depends on the platform. Um, on how to really grow your your uh, your business, but a lot of it also because I am heavily involved in my industry. I'm at a lot of events, so what I do is I take business cards. I don't just stack them in a pile. I send emails. I also add them to LinkedIn, and so that's kind of how you grow your uh, your network. And also, um, I just don't attend events locally. I also attend events globally. So I have people connected from all around the world. Actually, before this um, virus came about, I was actually supposed to be in France um, earlier this month, uh. representing the <laughs> Illinois Realtors at a global conference. I oh, was wow. a delegate. Yeah, I was a delegate uh, representing uh, the Illinois Realtors, bringing back foreign investment to the Illinois state. And uh, unfortunately, obviously, in a certain climate, that uh, conference has been postponed uh, to a further notice, but me going to those type of global conferences, I meet people from all over the world. Yeah, I'm connected with all walks of life. And that helps me kind of grow my social media base. And um, like I said, I love LinkedIn because you don't necessarily have to be connected with people, but people can still see your posts and connect with you. Yeah. But hear what Moses said there. I mean, yeah. not, number one, you're, you're insanely involved. So get involved would be the mm -hmm. takeaway there. But also you're not just letting business cards stack up in a pile, right? You're connecting with them immediately on LinkedIn. But your digital business your card too. Like that's Absolutely. the nugget, connect with everybody digitally. Like yeah, that's what you I mean. almost don't like, I don't want to trash business cards today. But it's almost like it doesn't do you any good to but give I think a business that's the card point. out. Like so many Connect people digitally. see a business card, right. throw it away, or they, they never use it again. Get mm -hmm. them connected. Take those business cards. I've started saying on the phone with all my phone calls is, hey, what's your Instagram handle? Right. And people give me their handle. Like, hey, I just friended you on Instagram. Because now there's a face to the salesman that's talking to you. Absolutely. And it starts getting you connected. So it's like your digital business card. Yeah. And then Absolutely. they see you cooking and they're like, oh, this guy's a weirdo. Hey, have you, have, no, you brought any, <laughs> <laughs> have you brought any of those keyboard skills into your content? Um, so, yeah, you know, I, I haven't really posted lately. But um, but um, I, I, I definitely occasionally may post a, a playing video of me playing piano or something That's like awesome. that. Um, even um, uh, oh, not too long ago, I was doing a uh, concert. It was a tribute concert to Jay-Z. And um, they had, you know, the artist had a live band and singers. And I was, you know, on piano. And uh, actually, some of my industry people ended up being at the concert. So it was it was nice for them to see me in a different limelight That's behind, awesome. on the stage behind the keyboard versus, you know, just in a, a boardroom or something like that. That's so awesome. it, 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 when you say connecting with people, um, that's just a connector. Like, OK, man, he cooks or he plays music or he does this. You're not just a robot. There is a human side to yeah, you. That's the, the like love. part of the know, yeah. like and trust. It's like yeah. we see this with our magazine. People use our magazine and when they put a picture of them with their family or with their pets on the front right. cover of the magazine, it immediately connects you to all the people in your database that owns, own pets. Because when you know that you have a dog or you have a cat and I have a dog, I have, like it's, it's a connector that you have. There's a key point that I want to point out to the audience about your journey that I think is really powerful that people underestimate is that idea of your hustle – for two years to even maybe longer to get right. this developer relationship. Yeah. Like, I just want to point out to everybody that, you know, it took that long, but in the grand scheme of things, probably when you think about, about it now, like back on it, it's, right. you know, in a blip that it went, yeah. but all of a sudden it got you this connection. And that two years, my brother, Steven, who's a real estate agent, he just got two relationships with two big time builders in his area. And I remember talking to him three years ago, his first year in real estate. And he was just like, I don't know how to get these builders and everything like that. But you know why the builders used them? It's the same reason you got that developer to use you yeah. is because they saw your hustle. 
Yeah. You were there, and, and the builders said they were watching Stephen and watching how he posted all the time, what he was yep. doing with his team, what wow. he was doing. And it and for people who own businesses or are developers, they want hustle, man. They yeah. want passion. Mm. They want people who are consistent. And so that consistency, I just want to point out to the audience, that's yeah. what really won the game for you, is Absolutely. that you showed up every single day. And people just underestimate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, like you said, it, it's not how you start the race it's how you finish it. So, you know, like you said, just staying in there, like you said, being consistent, adding people on social media, like, like you said, once people see the hustle and now you start to run in the same rooms that they're in now, it's not like, Oh, okay. He's, he's for real about this. Yep. And so, and that's kind of how I've been able to carry my weight in this industry. Well, I tell my sales team this all the time. And I, I maybe have shared this before on the podcast. It's like, if you show up in a suit, to work and you've never wore a suit before you're the weird guy that's wearing a suit today and people are going to make fun of you but if you show up in Eventually. a suit for six months straight 90 yeah. days straight also you, they expect you in a suit they're like oh yeah he yeah. wears suits that's what he does yeah. it's the same yeah. in business it's at first yeah. they're just like ah look at look at moses just trying yeah. his hardest there in commercial and then eventually it's like hey moses can you help me with my commercial because you've just built that reality to them because you've stayed consistent so i want to know you're young right so you're under 30 how yeah, old? 29. How, okay, 29. Okay, you've gotten on boards. How does a 29 year old get himself on boards? And what's practical advice you would give to people in their area to get them networked like that? Yeah. Well, as I kind of mentioned, when I first got in this industry, I thought it was just, you know, you get a lead, you do a showing, you close a deal. And then I realized, man, real estate is so much larger than that. And so, what I started to do was get involved. And I started my first committee that I got involved with here in Chicago was called the Young Professionals Network. And that kind of gave me my, my, my start into the committee and board type of, um, you know, side of stuff. And so from there, I've been able to start there and grow from there. And then I've been able to move up. And so now I sit on the Chicago Association Board of Directors, also the National Association Board of Directors, um, and I'm also uh, part of the uh, Governmental Relations Committee for the International C Council of Retail Shopping Centers. Um, so these That's types crazy. of things, <laughs> yeah, these types of things allow me to position myself as an expert um, in my field. Um, but like I said, you got to start small and then kind of build your way up. And being on these boards and committees have allowed me to build relationships from with people from all over the country. So did most of the boards happen because of the relationship you had at the smaller level? It wasn't like you went and asked that board to be a part of it? Correct. Correct. Okay. It, it, it was, That's like good you said, I had, to, I had, like you said, I think my first uh, committee that I joined was back in 2015. Okay. And so, you know, this has been like a five year process for me to get to the position that I am now. Okay. Um, but like you said, it was relationship. It was, like you said, consistency. People saw how hard I work, how serious I am. And then from a business standpoint, some of the issues that I uh, lobby against um, helps me with my clients, help me do business, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because I'm on the forefront where we talk about property taxes. We, we talk about property rights. We talk about different things that affect not only home buyers, but commercial uh, business owners, all these types of things. So it looks good for me when I can call my client and be like, hey, I was in Springfield, Illinois, lobbying on your behalf. I was talking to Congress. I was saying that these are your issues. And that's a golden nugget right there. Um, and that makes me look good in front of my clients when I can say I was on the forefront <laughs> fighting for your your on your behalf. Man, I love yeah, that. That's awesome. Yeah, that is incredible. You know, I see this like Angie's list right now. I believe is lobbying to, to the Senate in, in Congress going, you know, look at, I think it's like contractors and stuff as essential personnel or something like that, because right, the, most right. of them are 1099s. But think of all the goodwill Will that Angie's, list is, that getting, Angie's yeah. list is building in the right. minds of all those contractors, plumbers, all those people right. out there that run their own business. So that's right. an incredible golden nugget. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think it's important. And, um, you know, one of the things that have kind of has greatly changed the game here in Illinois is that now wholesalers um, in real estate, um, and I know we can probably break it down, but just a general term, wholesalers now have to be licensed real estate professionals in order to wholesale a deal in Illinois. Okay. And so that has greatly changed 
uh, the dynamic and how people are wholesaling real estate. And the reason I mention that is mainly because that probably passed is because they didn't have an association. They didn't have a lobby group to lobby against this down on Capitol Hill. So that's why it's important to have someone on the forefront talking to your state reps, mm -hmm. to Congress about certain things that may directly affect your business. Well, I think it's extremely powerful, even at a simple level, like you could be on the board and, and help influence the decisions in the community for even the charities that are Absolutely. happening in your, in your community. So you don't eat, meaning like for everybody who's thinking, Hey, well, I don't really want to be lobbying in DC, right? right? You don't right. even have to take it to that <laughs> level. Right. Uh, meaning like you can literally get on the local board of your food bank, serve Absolutely. there and be advocating for the community because you want to associate yourself with the community. Why? Because people see you first as a business person, as a salesperson trying to offer a service. And the more you can be involved with the community, the more they see you as an actual real person yeah. that Absolutely. You know, they trust and that gets you into a position of likability and trust. And then they will trust you with your service. And Absolutely. that's what people don't understand. Yeah, and, and to, to your point, um, I had the opportunity to partner uh, with, with the board I'm on and another local community organization. We were able to furnish uh, a place, a home uh, for a family of seven that was previously homeless for almost 10 years. That's awesome. So this organization places them in a home um, and pays their, their uh, cost and rent for, I believe, up to two years, wow. helps them with job placement. And me being on the board, we were able to donate to this cause and help furnish their uh, home and apartment. Uh, and you should have seen the, I posted the video on my uh, business pages. You should have seen the kids light up. It was like Christmas. They were just happy to have a dining room table. Mm. I mean, they, I mean, just to have a table to sit and eat food at, I mean, they were the most gracious, most uh, grateful kids that I've ever seen. And so, like you said, to do that on a more of a local level, um, it added, like you said, a personal touch to my base and just from a feel good standpoint to see that I'm helping the community, not just through buying and selling, but actually helping families out there. Nah, it's That's amazing, awesome, man. man. So my question to you is this is, and this is what we get all the time here at, from our listeners is we have so many people listening to this and they're looking for like effective ways to generate business. What's your one tip you would give right now for a listener who's trying to drum up business, whether it's in the commercial real estate space, the residential space, what action item could you give them to start executing on to try to get leads in the door that they can turn into business? Use social media. It's free. <laughs> it's free. Uh, 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 here's a prime example of the power of social media. And you have to, and, and it, you're not going to hit it, you know, out the ballpark on the first go around. It takes what we say consistency. consistency right? I, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys heard of DJ uh, Nice. Um, he did an a, a online live Instagram DJ set hmm. on Instagram this okay. past weekend. And he, uh, I think he initially had about three or 400,000 followers. He started, I believe, Thursday with uh, going Instagram Live, doing a DJ set. By Saturday, it had grew to over, I, be, I believe, 1.2 million followers. Wow. <laughs> he, he had Michelle Obama. He had Diddy. He had everybody tuning in. That to is awesome. Live. And he went viral. And when he first started, uh, to my knowledge, he only had maybe two or 300 people in his room. And, but he kept consistent with it. He didn't stop because he knew that everyone was home, quarantined, with nothing to do. People still want to get out. People still want to dance. People still want to have a good time. So he bought the club to you, to your own home. And genius. Using, using Instagram Live, he was able to grow his following in a matter of 24 to 48 hours. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean that, that's the golden nugget right there. So many people post one thing and then they give up or they do it for a week and they say ah, I'm not getting any traction, nobody's liking mm -hmm. my stuff, I'm going to stop. Um, but if you continue to, you will get better at making content. <laughs> right. This this podcast <laughs> was, was not awesome. <laughs> it was in the, in the beginning. It was okay, but yeah. it wasn't awesome. Now it's like like you will get better if two you keep years doing from now it. we're if gonna be like it was if you're terrible. Being consistent with it, 
Um, now it helps to have the talent to begin with. So that's going to be right. yeah. that's going to help. Right. But if you've got that, man, you've got to stick with it. You have yeah. to be consistent. Yeah, yeah. no, I yeah. agree. There's three things I look for in employees at Reminder Media: is uh, loyalty, work ethic, and talent. Absolutely. And you know, if you have all three, you're you're going to be a superstar. If you, and a lot of people lack. They might have the talent, but they lack the loyalty. And what I mean by loyalty, it's it's more thinking about others more than yourself. Mm. It's your your you're loyal to the cause more than you are to your own ambition. Mm. Uh, but if you have loyalty, work ethic, and then talent, man, you're a freaking superstar. That's what all the greats have. Absolutely. And, and you know, I hear this phrase all the time, and it holds so true. Your network is your net worth. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when you're on social media building your platform, you want to build your network, not just, you know, your cousins. And you start there, but you want to like, that's why I say I use LinkedIn, because now, you know, I'm connected with presidents of this company and that company. And I know that they see my post because actually it's 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 so uh, uh, ironic when I see these people in person, because sometimes I may connect with them on social media prior to actually <laughs> physically meeting them. And when I see them in person, people will come up to me and know me. Oh man, I saw your post, man. You're doing so, it's so great to finally meet you. And I, and sometimes they may not even never like, actually like my post. And so it always amazes yep. me that people know who I am, know what I've been up to. They've never really interacted with my post, but they know who I, and these are prominent people in my industry. So that's what I'm saying. Build your, build your network, use that platform. It's completely free. Um, and just kind of take it from there. No, I agree, especially for everybody with LinkedIn. If you just set out to friend all of the business owners in your community, what a powerful network that you're building for yourself on LinkedIn. And if you do that from a standpoint of offering them value, and giving to them more than you're thinking to take at first, all of a sudden you're going to find yourself in a town having all the friends that own businesses and they have so much influence because business owners, if it's a decent sized business, has an HR person and that HR person manages all the employees. So, so your Absolutely. influence is exponential when you do that. So that's a huge tip. All right, man, I got to ask you this it's because I'm a junkie for self-development and I ask all my guests that come on, okay? Is looking back on your life, you're 29 years old, right? Super successful on these boards, killing it in commercial real estate. What routines do you implement in your life that you believe have driven success for you? Like as you look at your life, are there any routines or things you do that has driven success for you? Um, so I definitely, um, for me, this industry will <laughs> drive you nuts um, if you allow it. <laughs> and so for me, I try to get up in the morning and, and just take time to meditate, reflect, um, you know, sometimes it's just, just quiet. I don't, you know, I don't need anything for me that helps me recenter, um, and kind of get my thoughts. Cause like you said, being in this industry will drive you nuts if you allow it. I mean, so <laughs> many things can go left and go, go right. Um, and, uh, for me, that's kind of one of the things that I, I try to just take a time to recenter myself, refocus. Sometimes I may listen to podcasts like yours, you know, or read a book or some type of self-development, you know, look at what's kind of going on in my industry. Um, so that's one thing I definitely do, just take time for myself. Uh, whatever that looks like for you as an individual, you definitely want to take time for yourself. Um, one thing that we kind of mentioned previously, I'm consistent with it. You know, I don't give up. I don't, you know, a lot of people looked at me crazy when they said, um, you know, when I said I wanted to open up my own real estate brokerage. And uh, within the first year, I mean, so many great things uh, develop. I mean, like you said, me winning Realtors Magazine 30 under 30, you know, I also uh, won Connect Media's um, Commercial Real Estate uh, Award. Um, so, I mean, so many great things. I'm currently listing one of my biggest listings to date right now. I have, awesome. a, uh, I have a 66 unit uh, apartment building I'm wow. selling. Nice. Um, you know, so, so many great things have happened um, within this short span of time, but it wouldn't have gotten there if I didn't stay consistent, if I didn't stay the course. Um, so that's one thing that has worked for me, setting time for myself, um, staying consistent, not giving up and building relationships. And always, like you said, continue to learn. You know, I think the way that you continue to, to grow your business is to be that expert, that mm. people look to you for information. And once you can do that, even if the information may be on Google or on Zillow or whatever, some other platform, 
But as long as you position yourself, people are always going to need you um, to conduct it business. Mm, well said. That's awesome, man. Moses, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you for your, having your me. Your journey's been amazing. Opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, tell people how they can connect with you before we uh, close out here. So you can follow me on all social media platforms. It's literally Moses Hall, M-O-S-E-S-H-A-L-L. Moses Hall on LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Facebook. And then my my business page is Mohawk Commercial. You can just, you know, Google Mohawk Commercial um, and you can link to all my pages there as well. It's awesome. awesome. Thank you so much again for being here. And thank you for listening. Uh, to dive deeper into this episode, get the show notes and let's uh, watch the video. Yes. Watch the video of You Luke's can see Josh and I's Converse. Beautiful uh, sweatshirt. <laughs> we are going to make these sweatshirts available for Yeah, these are actually. awesome. Seriously, they're so comfortable. They're awesome. Yeah, our, so. our internal store is like really picking up. We got some quality stuff in there. <laughs> got these nice fleece blankets. I'm teasing this to everyone. But you can't get it yet. But can't it's get coming. it yet. It's a teaser. Hey, uh, you can also, uh, like I said, find the video on staypaidpodcast.com. Um, and if you're interested in supporting the show, there are two ways that we ask you to do that. Number one, first and foremost, go rate the show on iTunes. Throw us a five-star review. Do leave it. Leave a comment. It really helps us move up the rankings and visibility within iTunes there. Mm -hmm. And then the best way is to tell a friend about this episode, about the podcast. What's the highest we've hit? Social media. What's the highest we've hit on iTunes right 14. now? 14. 14? Guys, yeah. our goal this year is number one. Number we, one. Need, we need your help in the marketing space. We want this podcast to go to number one. Yeah, we're putting out more episodes. We're, we're at we're your mercy. Two episodes Share it with your mom. Now. Share it with your brother, your best friend, if you have a best friend. Share. <laughs> I literally take people's phones. It was funny. My best friend, I subscribed him to the podcast a couple months ago. I took his phone. He has an Android, so it took me like like to an hour to figure out I how to an subscribe <laughs> to a podcast. So I feel your pains, people. Get an iPhone. It's really easy. <laughs> But I subscribed him to the podcast. He's never listened to a podcast in like two months. And then um, yet this past weekend, he goes, hey, thanks for putting out their, that coronavirus podcast. We did kind of a special yep. update. This is a little bit maybe. This is a couple months ago at this point yeah. uh, when this comes out. But uh, he uh, he put that. He said that was really helpful because he's a business owner because I really appreciate it. That's the first podcast that he ever listened to. <laughs> So I've been making people subscribe. I made my mom subscribe too. She still doesn't know how to play anything on her phone. But hey, hey but we you, earned a subscriber. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia or uh, dot com, or you can find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Steik. guys, and I'm Luke Acre. And Moses, thank you again, man. It was amazing, guys. You can thank tell you for the Moses, yeah, he's the real deal. You can tell that just by in his story, the rawness of kind of sharing. Here's the action item, and I think it's a really powerful action item it might take you a little bit of effort to do but i believe it will be worth it is you need to get connected in your community you heard moses say your net worth is directly correlated to your network so what are you doing right now to get a network in your community how are you connected and what you should do is sit down after listening to this podcast whether you're driving in the car whatever it is and what are the things in your community right now that you want to be involved in and you have to get involved in your community at the local level if you are a service-based sales professional, if you're a local business, and so many of you that listen to this are. So what boards can you get on? What charities can you be involved with? Where can you get involved? And then when you do that, now guess what? You have content. And you just, you just heard Moses share how LinkedIn has really helped him from a content standpoint. You can share that content on your social. But the action item is this. Get involved in your local community. Get yourself on some type of board, even if it's not an official board. Get yourself in some type of influence position in some type of charity or community event. Remember, the difference between a top producer and a mediocre producer in every business that we've worked in is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 